All right, so we can go ahead and get started. I'll probably hop off the stage since there's just so few of us. If we want to get closer, you guys can do that as well. Um, I love to talk about licensing. You know, based on what we've got here, there's like 4,990 people that have got other things to do, but this is the, this is the key group here. I can guarantee this will be the best licensing session at MMS. It's the only licensing session at MMS, but it is, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so my name is Adam Barron. Um, I am a, a business planner at Microsoft. I look after the pricing and licensing for most of our infrastructure products, Windows Server, System Center, uh, Windows Intune, things like that. So we're, we're going to do a few things today. Oops. Um, and since there's such a small group, oftentimes these licensing sort of sessions become a lot about Q&A. So we'll save lots of time for that at the end, because I'm guessing folks might have real specific questions about, I'm, this is where I've got, this is what I own, this is what I don't own. So we'll have lots of time for, for that. Uh, but what we're going to do today is really focus on you know, the, the 2012 set of things that we launched. It was a really uh, significant year for Microsoft when it comes to Windows Server, System Center, and Windows Intune. Some really significant launches uh, that really changed probably, probably some of the better releases ever of these products. Um, and, and with those products, we also made some really significant changes to the way you buy them, right? The licensing constructs around them. Um, we think in a lot of ways these really help simplify and, and uh, allow you to get the most value out of these things as possible. But, you know, licensing is sort of sometimes a trailing thing that people learn about. We've been out talking about the products a lot. You know, we ta we've been talking about System Center 2012 since last year at MMS, so we've, you know, we're going to have this kind of time to talk, bring everybody back up to speed around what, is, what does it mean to license these things, um, what are some of the hot topics that we've gotten from partners and customers, and try to address some of those things. Like I said, we'll have lots of time for Q&A at the end. Let's start at the top. Uh, in September, we released uh, Windows Server 2012. Again, like I said, a super significant release of Windows Server, um, really geared towards this cloud OS and the, public, uh, and the private cloud. Um, and with that, we simplified the licensing and moved it into to sort of a shared licensing construct with System Center, really a aligned around these two additions. So before, if you're familiar with that world, we had a a few different editions. They were licensed differently, some per server, some per proc. Um, they had different types of features and different editions. We did away with all of that and really tried to simplify this down. So now when you're thinking about the, the core Windows Server editions, you've got standard and you've got data center. You've got a shared set of capabilities across them. No, you know, you've got all of the things you need to do to manage any, or to run or manage any workload within both of these editions. The only thing you really have to think about is how much virtualization am I doing? If you're doing little or, or none, standard is the thing for you. If you're doing high density virtualization, data center is the, is the product for you. So we just drill into that briefly. Um, we're talking about the, the idea here that there's two editions. They're differentiated only by virtualization. So really, all you have to do is think about how many VMs I've got over here, and what's my plan for my virtualization density, and then choose. Data center allows you to run an unlimited number of VN, uh, VMs. Um, on a licensed server. So that's really a great way to, to grow uh, and, and maximize the, the efficiency of the server and the licensing dollar that you've spent for that server. Windows Server Standard uh, offers two VMs per license. So you can put that license on a server and you can run up to two VMs. If you have really light density, you can use it you know, up to two. Or if you have a physical server, then you're, you're covered there. Uh, additionally, we've now aligned to a common licensing structure. So like I said before, there used to be server, there used to be procs, there used to be different kind of concepts. Now it's all a proc plus cal model. And the cal model stays the same, right? So you buy the processor licenses, cover the server, and then the things that talk to the server, devices or users, you have to have what's called a client access license. So now it's all one unified common structure. Uh, the, the license that we sell that covers those processors, we really optimize toward uh, sort of the common, uh, the, the most common hardware in the market. So that's a license that covers up to two processors. We've got a bunch of examples on how that, what a two processor license means and how you purchase it, how you deploy it, that kind of thing. But it's a two processor license effectively. And then like I, I mentioned lastly there, we've got <coughs> common features across edition. So before, standard edition didn't let you do branch cache or didn't have all the high availability features. We've done away with all that because it, it doesn't really matter. 
but so you use standard, you use data center, and you can run whatever features you want to run. Uh, additionally, Windows Server Standard used to have memory and uh, you know, processor capabilities. We've done away with all that as well. So da data center, standard, you can run it on the same set of hardware. So really the idea here is you can consolidate your hardware, do whatever you want to do. These licenses can, are agnostic to all of that. So one of the hot topics that we get from customers and partners are, listen, I'm starting to do virtualization. I want to know how I can grow. Like so the standard price point's really great. It does what I need to do for now. But what happens when I, if I'm growing my virtualization density? Starting with little to none, maybe I'm going to grow into something more dense in the future. There's really two key ways that you can think about doing that. This is the first one. We call this our stacking option. So this allows you to continually scale up your, your virtualization at a fixed instance price. So over there on the left, you can think you bought your server. You're doing very little virtualization. You've got your one license on it. Everything is good. You have two VMs. Now you want to have three VMs or four VMs on that server. How do you license that? We allow you to, to purchase an additional license of Windows Server Standard and assign it to that server. So now uh, you have the ability to run up to four VMs. And if you need more, you can continue to stack those Windows Server licenses and cover all the VMs on the server. From a price point perspective, and this is all you know, from a forward planning perspective, the break even between a set of uh, stacked Windows Server standard licenses and one data center license is uh, approximately eight VMs. So that time you spin up that ninth VM and you'd need what is a, effectively a fifth Windows Server standard license would have been cheaper to buy data center. So you can kind of think of everything beyond eight VMs as free with a data center license. Um, so this is, our, this is our stacking model. If you think mid-range, you know, up to six to eight VMs on a server is where you're going to top out, stacking Windows Server licenses is going to be your best uh, uh, value for money on that one. If you think you're going to do more virtualization than that, even, even more density, the other option that we, that we talk about is what we call our step-up model. So we'll allow you to take a license that you have and step that up one for one. So one Windows Server standard license, you can step that directly up to a Windows Server data center license. All, all you pay is the difference. So we'll credit you all the, the payments that you've already made on standard, let you move into that data center license, and now you have unlimited virtualization on that, on that data center or on that server. The only thing to think about here is if you start stacking, stepping up is, it can be tricky because you have to step up one Windows Server standard license to one data center license. You can't pool two or three standard licenses and merge them together and step that into one data center license, unfortunately. So this is our step up strategy. So these are the, this is one of the, the key hot topics around Windows Server and, and how we grow with virtualization. It's important to think about you know, what are your long-term plans around virtualization and optimize the licensing for that using one of these methods. So that's Windows Server uh, at, at a very high level. So let's talk about what about System Center 2012, which is really you know, why we're all here. This is the management summit. We love System Center. Um, System Center really was the first product out of the gate with this licensing model, and we took the wraps off of this uh, last year at MMS 2012 uh, and, and launched System Center 2012. Just like Windows Server, we've got this concept of two editions. You've got a standard thing and a data center thing. They're differentiated only on virtualization rights. So you want to do a little or, or no density and no virtualization, that's your standard product is the best thing for you. If you want to do a lot of virtualization, data center really is the best, the best product there. Um, you get all of the features all the time. So customers can manage any workload. So in the past, you had to know whether or not you had this kind of workload you were managing or that kind of workload, and you had to buy a standard or an enterprise license. All that goes away, you just buy one of these licenses and you can manage anything that runs on the server. Um, additionally, you used to have to purchase licenses for the consoles, right? You're gonna stand up a distribution point in Config Manager. You needed a license for that. You wanted to have SQL with that? All right, we had to get a license for that as well. Now with System Center 2012, all that's included. You, could, you just license up the servers and the OSs that you're gonna manage, and all of that infrastructure to support the deployment, the management consoles, the SQL runtime, all included with the license, so super simple there. Uh, additionally, with the two editions and all, fe all the features all the time, you know, we well, used to, to buy uh, components of System Center. Now System Center 2012 is really an integrated product of management, right? So with each one of these licenses, you get all of those things you used to know as separate components, Config Man, 
ops man, uh, uh, service manager, et cetera. So you get all of those, and you get to use them against all your server OSs. And then lastly, just like Windows Server, this is a processor-based license. Uh, it covers up to two processors, just like Windows Server. So that really was the goal around licensing for your private cloud. Let's get Windows Server, let's get System Center on the same uh, licensing path, makes it super easy to just put those things together. You think about the servers you're running, the OSs you're running, and the servers you're managing, and you can think about them. You don't have to think about uh, licensing those differently. So let's talk about exactly what's in those, those system center uh, uh, products, the standard and data center. If you want to do management of, of the servers, you can use any one of those um, things that you used to know as a standalone product together. So you get ops man, config man, uh, data protection manager, server, uh, service manager, VMM. We now, you now get antivirus protection through endpoint protection. You get the super powerful automation through orchestrator and, and app controller to give you the deep application insights. So you get all of these features included with your system center license. You don't have to think about, uh, I need an extra license for this or that. It's all included within those packages. So that's server, excuse me, server management at a, at a very high level. We'll do a bunch of examples and, and kind of drill into those as, as we go. But let's talk about what it takes to manage clients. You know, configuration manager is, you know, has some of the most passionate, um, excited people at, at Microsoft, I think all up at Microsoft, uh, who use these products. So this is how you license those things to manage your desktops and your devices uh, via system center specifically. So in the same vein around uh, the server management, we've simplified the, the client management licensing as well. Uh, down from you know, 11 different things you could buy to just three. There's three things. They're differentiated by the elements that are included in them. Uh, the three things are System Center 2012, the thing you, you know, you know, people know and love. Um, that includes Configuration Manager. It also includes Virtual Machine Manager. It's for you, uh, your ability to uh, really do VDI. It makes it much more simple. You've already got that VMM component that you can use against that, that desktop OS. Then we've got Endpoint Protection. Uh, which is our antivirus software, which is uh, managed through Configuration Manager's console. Both of those things are included in what we call our Microsoft Core Cal, which includes a Windows Server Cal, those two elements, as well as some Office things like Exchange and SharePoint Standard Edition. And those really are, if you want any of these things, those Cal suites really are the most economical way uh, to, to get access to that software. Then the last offer is uh, System Center 2012 client management suite. That includes the use rights for service manager, ops manager, data protection manager, and orchestrator. All of those things to be used against your desktops or your devices. And that, while it's sold standalone, you can absolutely just buy that uh, off the price list. It's also included if you own uh, Enterprise Cal, the, the Microsoft Enterprise Cal. And just like the server management licenses, all of these licenses include the rights to all of the, the um, management software as well as the SQL to support the deployments. So again, you want to stand up those config manager uh, you know, distribution points or management servers, no extra licensing required for that, as well as the SQL to store all the data, do all the reporting against all that, all included with the licenses. You just license up your endpoints. So let's, let's drill into that just for a second, because we do think that's a super uh, helpful thing for, for customers. Um, we talked about server management. We talked about client management. Uh, if you're going to be doing server management, you have to buy these server licenses, the standard or data center things, right? And that's our, if you want to do on-prem you know, on or cloud-hosted managed servers, let's say you're managing SharePoint or Exchange, those are servers you're managing. If you have clients, Windows clients, those require a client license. In the past, you'd have to buy licenses for all of the management servers to do the deployment, to do all the, man the, the actual administering of the management. Um, so now, all you really have to do is think about those things you're managing. Manage servers, you buy server management licenses. Manage clients, you buy client management licenses. All the smush on the right-hand side, you just comes along for free. You can do whatever you want to do there. So I just wanted to really make sure that was clear. When you need a license, when you don't, and what kind of license. Let's talk about some examples really quickly. So we got four examples that um, really are informed by what our customers have told us, what our partners have told us, uh, to, to help them understand kind of this new licensing model. So let's take example number one up there, 
pretty straightforward. I've got two servers. Each of those servers are single proc servers, and they're physical. They just have one server OS on each of those. In this case, you'd need a license for each one of those servers. So one Windows Server, or excuse me, one System Center 2012 license for each server is the cheapest way to do it since you're not doing any virtualization there. So two System Center 2012 standard licenses is the most economical way to buy this, uh, to, to cover those servers. So even though they only have one proc each, you still have to cover each server. The license covers up to two procs, but you still have to have a, a license on each server. All right, now example two, we've got a, a server that's got four processors on it. How many licenses do I need there? What we're, here we've got uh, no virtualization, really just one OS running on the server. Since you have to cover all four uh, processors with a license, you'd need two licenses, either of standard or data center. Since you're not doing virtualization here, you just would buy the System Center 2012 standard, and then you're, you're covered there. Now example three, this is similar to what we talked about with Windows Server. Just like with Windows Server, and you can stack those licenses to gain additional virtualization density, you can do the same thing with System Center. So you've got one two processor server there, you've got some virtualization going on, you've got three VMs on this server. So you could buy two System Center 2012 standard licenses to cover the VM density there, right? That would give you the ability to run up to four VMs uh, on that server. Or if you think you're gonna be doing more virtualization in the future, you could buy one data center license, and that would give you unlimited virtualization on that server. Which is really the example number four. I've got a two proc server, and I've got eight VMs on, on that server. In that case, it's, it's much more cost effective to buy one data center license than the four standard licenses. Then lastly, another key question we've gotten a ton is, listen, I'm virtualizing and now I'm moving all my stuff to a, a public cloud or a hosted cloud somewhere, and I'm just moving them up, you know, and I'm running the VM in the cloud, for example, at my hoster. How do I manage those? What do I do from a licensing perspective? So uh, st the, the System Center 2012 standard license will allow you to manage up to two VMs in the cloud. The data center license will let you uh, manage up to eight VMs in that cloud. So for example, if you have three VMs running in a hoster somewhere, you'd need, most cost effective way to do that would be to, to buy two standard licenses to cover those two, li two, those three VMs. Now it's important to remember that that's an or statement. So if you buy a System Center 2012 uh, license, you can cover your server on-prem or your hosted instances in the cloud, not, not both. All right. So that's Windows Server 2012, System Center 2012, and now uh, Windows Intune is sort of the third leg of the stool on our management and, and infrastructure play. So let's talk about that. So that was uh, in December and January, we launched a new wave of, of Windows Intune, um, really changing the, both the product and the licensing element. And so we did that really based on feedback from you, our customers, and from our partners. Um, and so we heard a lot of things. You, you told us a variety of things, and we responded both from a product perspective and from a licensing perspective. So first of all, you know, our, our customers told us that they wanted a solution uh, to manage lots of different kind of devices. We have, you know, our customers told us we have a heterogeneous environment, you know, lots of different kinds of devices, and, you, and we really need you to help us manage those devices. So from a product perspective, Windows Intune now provides support for Windows 8, Windows RT, Windows Phone 8, as well as iOS and Android. So the broad range of different kinds of things, as well as older uh, versions of Windows as well. In the past, Windows Intune was a device-based license, and it always came with Windows software assurance, so for, for your desktop. In this world of heterogene heterogeneous environments and different kinds of devices coming in, uh, our customers were, were really telling us that we did, they didn't want to have Windows in the same place where I'm managing all the rest of these devices. So with the, the new version of Windows Intune, we've decoupled from that device licensing and from that Windows licensing, so you don't have to have Windows with your Windows Intune license. Secondly, our users told us, or our customers told us that they have a user in the middle and really surrounded by lots of different devices, right? This is just obvious. If you walk up and down the halls, everyone has phones and iPads, and I've even seen some surfaces, which is crazy, uh, and, and then their PC or their laptop as well. So with, from a product perspective, Windows Intune has a, has a much stronger affinity between the user and the devices that they have. So when you're managing all of that context, you can understand where those devices live in relationship to the users. 
So from a licensing perspective, we thought it made a lot of sense really to move away from licensing a device at a time to licensing a user. This user now with the Windows Intune license, you can manage all the devices that that user has associated to, to them, be it phones or tablets or PCs, what have you. And then lastly, your customers told us, we, we love Configuration Manager. We love how you help us do the management there. We want to have one thing from Microsoft. We don't want to have to choose between Config Manager or Intune. Help, help us work together with these things. So from a product perspective with Intune that, that launched in uh, December or January, we really delivered a, a unified experience with Configuration Manager. So from that single pane of glass within Configuration Manager, you can manage PCs, you can manage, you, know, you can consume the Intune service to manage all of these mobile devices, Windows 8, Windows RT, Windows Phone 8, iOS, and Android are all enabled via Windows Intune. And then from a licensing perspective, we wanted to make sure that when customers bought Intune, they had everything they needed to do, you know, unified device management from Microsoft. So they always have Configuration Manager and the Intune service whenever they're, they're doing, uh, whenever they buy Windows Intune from Microsoft. So they have all the building blocks that they need. So let's look at what are the Intune offers? What, did we, what do we start selling? Uh, and we did a demo last year at MMS around Windows Intune, but we didn't talk about the licensing changes. So this really is the, the, our, our mobile device management and unified device management set of offers from Microsoft. So we think about Windows Intune, which is sort of the, the core offer there. That includes the, cloud, the Windows Intune cloud service, as well as on-prem use rights for configuration manager. Just like you'd buy that through your CoreCal or what have you, you get to use Configuration Manager, the SQL, the, 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 uh, the management software, everything. That's included, uh, all that for $6 per user per month. Uh, again, that's a, uh, uh, a direct price, so you go to Intune.com, that's what you'd pay there. Uh, you'd pay less than that through your volume license agreements with Microsoft. And that's available in both of those channels. Now, if a customer already owns Configuration Manager, we will allow you to just add Windows Intune. So you already are paying for Config Manager, you have CoreCal, what have you. You want to start doing uh, the management of these extra devices, there's an add-on for that. So for $4 per user per month, you can include Windows Intune into your deployment, start managing all those new devices. And then lastly, if you still want Windows uh, software Assurance, the Windows Client upgrade to Windows Enterprise as part of your Windows Intune purchase, we still do allow that, that SKU as well, but it's not required that you have Windows with the, the purchase. The only other thing that's important to note here is that we, these are a, a per-user license, and they, let, they allow you to manage up to five devices per, per user. All right. So let's do a couple of examples. Again, these are, were formulated based on feedback from customers and from partners, and even had one of these questions before we started. So let's, we'll just drill through these. And then we'll have lots of time for Q&A at the end, and uh, so we can drill into these even further if you want to. The first example, pretty straightforward. I, you know, I have 500 devices or 500 desktops, and I'm using Configuration Manager to do a patch and, and uh, you know, desired end management or desired configuration management. Um, what do I need to buy there? In that case, you'd need to buy 500 Configuration Manager client management licenses. So you can use that. You don't need to get any additional licenses for the management software or for the SQL to do it. You just count up how many desktops you have by the number of licenses. Second example, uh, what if I have Orchestrator, you know, and I've built some custom run books to do automation around sucking data in from somewhere and do, taking some action, and then ultimately I have Configuration Manager do something to this device because of the automation I've done within, within Orchestrator. Um, in this case, this is, while Orchestrator is not directly touching that desktop, it is participating in the indirect management of, of that desktop. So the customer, you'd need to purchase 500 Config Manager licenses, because that's going to be managing the desktops, as well as 500 uh, client management suites, which allow, which allow you to have Orchestrator uh, running against the desktop, as well as Ops Manager, Service Manager, or DPM. So you get all those additional features with, with uh, the client management suite. Uh, additionally, you could buy an eCal, for example, too, and then you're done. Now, example three, what, this is sort of, now how do I start thinking about all the additional devices that I've got coming into my organization? Uh, I have uh, 500, 500 users that I'm managing. 
Um, and each of those users have, has a desktop PC, they have a Windows 8 device, and they have a, a Surface RT tablet, for example. What, what do I need to license in that case to, to manage all of those different kind of devices? So in this case, you could go and purchase 500 Windows Intune licenses, and then you're done. You've got all the components you need uh, to start managing all of those devices for all, all 500 of your users. Or if, for example, you already own Configuration Manager, you could just add the, the Windows Intune add-on and start and plug that into your Configuration Manager uh, deployment and start managing all those additional devices. All right, I think we're almost done here. So just we'll recap really, this is the recap of the recap. Uh, so we'll just really quickly, these are the sort of great slides if you want to, uh, uh, I think these are distributed after the fact, but if you want to go back and watch this or have your, you know, procurement people back at home watch this, these are your sort of takeaway slides, I think. Um, from a, this is really around server management licensing. This is really the unified view of everything server, OS, plus management uh, uh, from, from Microsoft, right? You've got two editions. You got standard and you got data center. Uh, that applies to Windows Server 2012, System Center 2012, as well as what we call our, our core infrastructure suite SKUs, which are those two things put together. You can buy that under your, your enterprise agreement in an enrollment for core infrastructure uh, at a significant discount there. Then, you know, those license types, look, both of them are, are uh, two processor licenses, so exactly the same licensing type. Um, the, from a features perspective, all of those licenses include everything that you'd need to, uh, to do management and to, do the, the, to run the OS. The only thing that's different about those two elements is the virtualization rights. Standard gets you two VMs. Uh, data center gets you unlimited VMs. All right, so the similar slide for client management license. What are the things that I buy? And, and what's the difference between them? Really, four key offers. You've got Configuration Manager, Endpoint Protection, and the Client Management Suite, as well as Windows Intune. And you can see the included elements there. And then CoreCal gets you Configuration Manager and Endpoint Protection. eCal is the Client Management Suite. And in all those cases, if you own those things uh, up above, you can add that on. You can add Windows Intune uh, on later, or you can buy Windows Intune separately. So with that, that's like a year's worth of licensing in 27 minutes, which is like the, this is incredibly uh, fast to go through all that. So, so there's a small group of people. We can, you know, we can come closer if you have questions. Um, there is, you can either stay or you can, you can go. There are uh, the feedback forms and whatnot that you can fill out, but I'll just pause there for any questions. There's a mic there, or you can just yell. There's like 12 of us. What's up? A question about uh, service manager. Yeah. Um, manage device. When does the device become managed? Is it enough to, uh, that it's synchronized to the CMDB, for example? Or do you actually have to do some work with it, attach a work item or something? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, if I remember the rule correctly, is this like, are you talking about server devices or client devices client or? Client uh, devices. Yeah. Typically, you get a help desk ticket and you relate to the configuration item, for example. Yeah, I, as I recall, the rule is if you're in the CMDB and you have an OS, the device needs to have a license. Um, <clears throat> but we could talk about your specific example. So if, if service manager is issuing a ticket against that device to have configuration manager take action against it, ultimately, that's, an, that's what we call indirect management. So you wouldn't necessarily need a license, or you, excuse me, you would need a license in that case for service manager to, to orchestrate that uh, interaction with configuration manager. So then you'd need one of the client management suite licenses. But uh, if you have a lot of devices that uh, maybe never or probably not will be uh, related, but just are synchronized from Active Directory. Uh, did I understand it correctly? Did you need the client management uh, license for that? Um, I, what I can do, why don't I give you my card and I can follow up with that one. So if you're, if you're doing indirect management, meaning service manager is putting, you know, you're gonna uh, ultimately do something with configuration manager or some other management tool on those, those de uh, de 
uh, devices or desktops, then you would need a license for that. And I think the rule is, if it's in the CMDB plus it has an OS, that's typically the rule of thumb. Yeah. But there are there are some uh, edge cases around that that we could yeah. talk about specifically. But that's that's the rule as it's written in the the licensing. Thank you. Language. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So the ECI is the enrollment for core infrastructure. That's a poor, That's a uh, an enrollment under an enterprise agreement. So you sign your enterprise agreement, then there's a variety of enrollments under that agreement. There's the desktop enrollment, there's the enrollment for core infrastructure, there's enrollment for app plat, enrollment for, uh, for Azure. The ECI uh, is a enrollment where if you sign up and license 50 procs minimum, you get a 20% discount on the sum of Windows Server and System Center. So you, you, you cover you know, a large chunk of your, your servers and we give you a discount. So that's, that's ECI. Um, the SKUs inside of ECI are actually called CIS, the core infrastructure suite. And so we, they're, they're at a 20% discount inside ECI. We also sell those same SKUs outside of ECI at a 5% discount. So really just a, a, if you only want to have one thing, you check the box on, the, on the, uh, you know, the sheet with the partner, then you just can buy that, you get a 5% discount. But there's no minimum requirement. You don't have to have 50 procs minimum. That's a, that's a great question. So the question was asset inventorying stuff, asset inventory reports, are those exclusively in Intune or are they, they used to be in Config Manager as well, right? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, I, I, don't recall, I don't know that they're taken out of Config Manager and, and that element, so they, they, we can confirm that. I can follow up with you after the fact. Do you know, Jim? They're still in there. So Jim is one of our engineers on the Intune and Config Manager side. Uh, so they're still there. And then there's also the map tool. I don't know if you know about map as a free thing that does asset inventorying and things like that outside of Config Manager. Yes, question in the back. Uh, the question was, fix the tools to get proper reporting kind of around like what, what do I have deployed versus what licenses do I own to help me sort of put those things together? And also for SPLA. Yeah, those are, those are all good questions. Um, we absolutely think that's, this, this is one of the questions we get a lot from our customers. Like, help me be compliant, right? Like, don't make me, don't come in later. Don't come, we don't want to do a, a SAM thing. SAM is really good, it's important. Um, but what, what do you do, Microsoft, it, natively in the tools? Absolutely, it's top of mind. I can't share anything specifically today, but it's clearly one of our, one of the things that's really important, we think, to get right moving forward, Espe you know, especially as we have now this real high level of portability between the kind of concept of three clouds, right? Private cloud, on-prem, Azure, and then hosted clouds. As you move around, we absolutely, you know, it gets m more and more difficult for customers to figure out what they own. Spl Spla in particular, uh, you know, the reporting engines there. Um, I th so, yeah, that's what I can say at, at this time about that. But that's a, a great question. Yeah, that's a good question. The, the question was, can I take my licenses that I own on-prem and use that on Azure? The answer is no. So we, we have, uh, the answer is sort of. Uh, <laughs> that's a, always a good licensing answer. Um, for, we have a concept uh, that comes with our software assurance benefit. It's a benefit of software assurance called license mobility. Uh, and that allows you to take a license on-prem and move that to a hosted cloud, either in Azure or, or someone else's cloud. Um, Windows Server, unfortunately, is not, doesn't participate in the license mobility because really that's what you get when you buy Azure. You're, you're buying the infrastructure there. And so you have your infrastructure you paid for on-prem. You, you pay for your infrastructure in Azure. The, the workload that runs on top of that infrastructure, you can move around. Like Exchange, for example, you could move that uh, through license mobility. I, th I thought I saw another hand, too. Did that answer your question? Okay. Yes? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's one of the super hot topics that we get from our, our, our customers and partners. And what I'll say first of all there is Orchestrator was absolutely built with server management in mind, right? So when you think about System Center 2012 and you got all the components and all the licenses, you're doing tons of automation, that's really the, the heart and soul of what the private cloud is, right? Doing, turning VMs on, spinning things up, adding, you know, using Orchestrator to do all of that. Um, we found that customers also really like to use that automation to do things with desktops, right? To automate various tasks. Um, the licensing rule in that case is uh, Orchestrator in, in doing those functions is what we call indirectly managing those desktops. So for example, if you have Orchestrator, you know, um, when, when people, what was the one someone just emailed me about last week? If I use Orchestrator Runbook to take names that get added to a distribution list in, in AD, I take those names out, I put them in a, in a catalog or a what have you in Configuration Manager, then Configuration Manager provisions them software. In that case, Orchestrator is indirectly managing those desktops via Configuration Manager. So in that case, you'd need to have one of the client management suite licenses. And again, those are sold standalone. You can buy that and you get all four of those elements. Or if you own the Enterprise Cal. One of the other kind of hot topics or th feed, you know, feedback that I've seen in the community is that the, the thought process was that if I don't have eCal, I can't use Orchestrator on my desktops. And, and we absolutely sell that client management suite separately outside of eCal. So you don't have to have an eCal. That's sort of one of the things I see. Did that, did that help clarify answer your questions? Anything else? Sure. Yeah, it's a great question. So <clears throat> we haven't specifically made any, any changes to Windows Server Cal licensing. Um, Microsoft at a company level uh, changed the price of the user Cal because of that fact where you have you know, you've got a user who has multiple devices um, that's more, you know, uh, th so we raised the price there on the, window, on the user cal by 15%. So it's more, slightly more expensive to get the user cal, but a ton more value because you can use that on, uh, you know, any number of devices associated to that user. But you still, you know, uh, if uh, any device or user that's accessing your on-prem Windows Server cals, or excuse me, your on-prem Windows Server infrastructure still require those CAL licenses. Um, and we think that, you know, the user CAL more and more with BYOD, if you have your private cloud, you have infrastructure running on-prem, the user CAL just makes more and more sense to, to license from, as such. So you think about devices that are accessing mail and collaboration stuff through, through um, you know, on-prem, the user is so sort of really at the heart and soul, at the center of all of that, of all those elements. So nothing specific there. You know, um, <clears throat> Azure and SPLA don't require CALs, right? So the, the, the concept of a CAL is very on-prem uh, infrastructure focused. Um, so those, the, that's how those three kind of clouds are different. Yep. It's a great question. So Azure Active Directory is, is um, included with your Azure subscription. So you buy, let's say you buy Azure Compute, Storage, or Data. Oh, yeah. Sorry, let me just grab my card real quick. There you go. So, so yeah, you're, um, I'm just going to hop down. Uh, 